92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's back with us. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Yeah, been a long time. Good to see you again. Yeah, you're still smiling. That's a good thing. Nice to have you with us. Doc Talk is back on WROI. We're very pleased about that. And as we go through the course of the program this morning, as you have questions, feel free to give us a call right here at the studio, 223-6059. Post them on our Facebook page. Or, of course, you can email them to us at WROI at RTCOL.com. And you can also say good morning that way to Dr. Keith Thome. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Nice to have you with us today. I'm really happy to be here. Oh, very nice to have you with us. And, of course, you're a general surgeon, right? Yes. At Woodlawn Hospital. Mm -hmm. Practicing with Dr. John Nile. Yes, sir. Okay. Folks may not be familiar with Dr. Thome, so kind of fill us in on your background a little bit if you'd be so kind. Sure, sure. I grew up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and uh, the youngest of eight kids. Wow. Yep. And there I went to school in Wisconsin, went to Madison, University of Wisconsin Medical School, and from there did my surgical training at Loyola in Chicago. Okay. So that was uh, five years there. Came out, had to decide whether I was going to go into academics or private practice. I decided to go into academics. So I went to the University of Mississippi and taught general surgery there for a number of years. And from there, I started had, having kids and family life. So we went back to the St. Louis area and was there for more than 10 years okay. doing private practice, working in some of the big hospitals. And, uh, and here I am today. You don't look that old. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to do that. Exercise, you, supplements. Sure. When you mm -hmm. make that decision as to whether you want to actually teach the science or whether you want to practice it, what goes through your mind at that time? Well, it's really a personality thing. Okay. And, and, and the type of people that you cross uh, during your training, a lot of people, whatever field they go into, it's really like they did a, a certain training under someone they really like them and so if you like the idea of teaching people and had a good experience with that it kind of makes you want to teach surgery and, and go into academics okay and then uh from there now you're you're actually practicing it now what yes. you've been teaching what you were teaching you're practicing now that's right surgery is a very wide field encompasses a lot of things uh are there specialties in terms of surgery are there a gen your general surgeon type thing that absolutely okay and uh not to make general surgery like this huge uh, thing but it's really the backbone i think of surgery most surgeons whether they're orthopedic cardiovascular thoracic they all start in general surgery okay at least for a few years so we're the backbone and then after a few years, someone decides, well, I'm going to do a little more of this or that neurosurgery. So uh, that's how that works. And of course, at a hospital like Woodlawn, that's uh, what we need, the general surgeons. Absolutely. You know, And that's uh, family practice, internists, and uh, general surgeons, along with uh, gynecologists, really are run a hospital as far as the surgical side. Speaking of gynecologists, we'll talk with OBGYN Dr. Eric Seward here in a couple of weeks on this very program. So yes, we'll he, give him a little promotion ahead of time. That's awesome. Yeah, he's going to be on this program with myself uh, every two weeks. Okay, uh, what can we expect from this program, doctor? Well, it's really going to be fun. I, I want to make it very interactive with okay. the callers. And I'm sort of, a, even though you know I've done well in school, I'm very simplistic. And I've worked at universities. I've worked in private practice. Um, I'm from the Midwest. I kind of know what pe people expect, people, what kind of questions they have. And we're going to hit all the topics. And I'd like to bring in different doctors from different fields, cardiology, urology, uh, all these different fields. And I I'd like to interview them knowing sort of the questions that the general public would sure. ask. And uh, I'll be sort of in your position okay. in some ways. And, that's fine. Uh, I'd go out for coffee. That's fine. Awesome. <laughs> you can have but it. <laughs> I think it'll be really fun. People can call in and ask questions. And we're obviously the first part of the year here. I'm going to go through some of the topics in general surgery, but uh, we're going to really mix it up. You've got a note here about program topic regulars. So what, uh, what can we expect on a regular basis from this show? Um, on a regular basis, uh, 
Yeah, I had a time we're going to say, well, what's the topic going to be right. two weeks ahead? Okay. But uh, I think we're going to talk even, we might even talk a little about national medicine and we might talk about a little of sports locally. We might sure. get into everything. Okay. So it's, it's going to be really laid back, uh, but hopefully very informational for everyone listening. You've been involved as a surgeon for a while. I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes as time has gone on. Well, absolutely. And and probably continuing changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of it, to me, has been more on the insurance side okay. and, and Medicare, Medicaid, the insurance side. You could talk for an hour, and I, I think we'll spend a couple of our sessions here talking about that. But those I are think the that's biggest an important changes. topic, sure. Mm -hmm. But to make a very simplistic one-minute discussion of that is... Things really changed during the time of President Clinton. And at that time, if, if you remember, there were the, the new concept was the gatekeepers. So you could never even see a surgeon unless you went through your family practitioner. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what happened that's what at that was. time. Sure. And that was, a, that was a first big change in medicine that I saw because it really changed the dynamics. Well, they found out that didn't really work great. And then they kind of like like the government the government works very slow and so does medicine so it went back to a nice happy medium sure. and, and it, it, that's okay where it's at right now one of the other things that president clinton did was he started this uh, impetus on an emphasis on gene therapy does that affect you as a, as a surgeon well gene therapy is very uh it is a, a new topic really they've been working on it for a long sure. time but you know, we can go into lots of uh, discussion about gene therapy, especially in the cancer therapy. And uh, I can tell the public, if you uh, tune in every two weeks or four weeks, uh, we can talk about these really cool changes in DNA therapy that would completely flip how you treat cancer. Like, it, in a brief summary, sometimes we even want to keep a cancer in someone and not surgically remove it. Allow them to heal themselves almost. W well, the, yeah, with the chemotherapy and radiation, but the cancer mutates itself. And the whole idea to stop the metastatic disease is actually you want to catch the mutation so better drugs can be used. And if you talk about DNA, like breast cancer has 110 fingerprints, just like a fingerprint, we know exactly what type of breast cancer. Instead of the old days, it was, well, it was uh, ductal or lobular or something, you know, right. very simple, but now it's very, very complex. Spend a moment with us about the technology of being a surgeon, because it used to be that uh, some kind of surgical procedures would require a week, uh, maybe even up to 10 days of hospitalization. And now you're kind of in and out within a day or so, or maybe even the same day. Technology's changed a lot of that. It sure has. And what you're really leading to is laparoscopy, the little incisions. And uh, we can get in there with today's technology uh, and do these operations with minimal incisions and minimal post-operative pain. So really it comes down to the same process as 20 years ago is if someone is walking and minimal pain, they're eating and passing gas. Then, then they're out of the hospital. And everything's fine at yes. that point in time, right? <laughs> exactly. Dr. Keith Thome is our guest. And, of course, this is the Doc Talk program. We're going to have several more of these. So as we go through the course of the programs, as our listeners have ideas, you're willing to listen to those too? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll listen to those. And obviously I'm, I'm opinionated, but I'll try to be neutral uh, in my answers. And uh, we should have fun. What do you think the state of surgery we've t been talking about a moment ago about the technological changes. Uh, another five years from now, another 10 years from now, what, what will be the state of general surgery? There are little small improvements in the true field, like in the operating room. I don't see major advances, some with some technology, some with some staplers, smaller incisions. But what you're really going to see the changes are really a cookbook format that everybody follows when a certain operation's done all surgeons are going to order these things it, and it's going to be what nowadays quality is being looked at and uh, maybe the older surgeons maybe uh, are doing things sort of the old way and they're they will need to catch up and say okay it needs to be really done this cookbook way this is a standard they can go 
They don't have to do that, but they're going to recommend it that that's going to be done. So uh, the post harbor care will be more um, unified. We've all seen the TV shows about doctors and about surgeons and all those kinds of things. And, of course, they're set up to entertain people at the same time. Are, are there methods that they use? Are there truths to those types of programs? Or is surgery today different from that? Well, going back, I think it was about 15 years ago, maybe 20, uh, the first really show called ER. Right. Uh, the first uh, half a year, it was, like, interesting. But once <laughs> the writers and they got the doctors in there, it actually became quite uh, similar to what we deal with. Uh, obviously, they throw in some social issues that uh, are not usually in the, in the norm, but uh, it's pretty darn close now. Dr. Keith Thilme, again, our guest. And uh, other things you would like to pass along to the listeners this morning? Well, uh, it's important today that we all recognize uh, what happened at 911, and we uh, exactly. give our uh, condolences to those in New York City and Pennsylvania. Uh, the next thing of importance would be those in Texas who underwent the Hurricane Harvey and, of course, uh, now in Florida, everything going on with Hurricane Irma. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a bad situation. It continues to be. Hopefully the worst has passed, but at the same time, it still continues on into the state of Georgia and Alabama, and we'll have to see where it goes from here. Sure. Doctor, as uh, we wrap this up today, someone who wants to see a surgeon thinks they might have an issue. Do they need to go through their general practitioner first? Their no, family nowadays, doctor first? You, nowadays uh, you can 95% of the time you can just end up calling the surgical office and getting in. Okay. And, and how do we do that here in Rochester? We just call Woodlawn Hospital and they'll direct you to the surgical services. Okay. And uh, you're there ready to go, right? Absolutely. All I have right. six cases later today after the show and uh, I'm there for everybody. We've had a couple write-ups about you, uh, very, very favorable write-ups on our Facebook page too. Oh, so. great. Thank you. So, yes, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. I look, look forward to visiting with you. What are we going to talk about next month? We are going to talk about cool sculpting and liposuction. Really? Yes. Wow. And all about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know about that, Scott, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you recommending me No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Dr. Keith Thome, thank you very much for being here today. We hey, appreciate it. It's great. It. I, looking forward to the next years. We are, too. Thank you very much. Great.